Hey guys, welcome back to the course. Remember the 19 things we talked about last lecture? Well, we only listed them off rather mysteriously. So in this lecture called the 19 channels explained, it's actually two lectures, or as I like to call it, how many can Evan explain before getting tired? Probably 10. Why only 10? Well, because 10 of these 19 are the main ones, and coincidentally, it's what we cover in the course. The other nine stragglers are kind of weird. Too specific, I think, to be helpful in this course. So at the end of this lecture, you'll know the basics of the 10 main ways people get customers. I would imagine you know some or the most of these, but please just suck it up or skip the lecture. The other nine will include as a resource either in this lecture or the next. Seriously, they're kind of weird. We're talking about things like giant posters on the highway used primarily to guilt you into going to church or which exit to take to blow your life savings on slot machines, also known as billboards. Is that only a thing in America? If you are disappointed that we are not covering billboards, I apologize. Also, good luck with that, you billboardpreneur. All right, let's get this started. Number one, SEO. SEO for the non-initiated means search engine optimization. People search for things online and they do so through places like Google and really it's just Google. If you use Bing, then your family needs to have an intervention because that's nice. I also bet you are still a proud user of Hotmail. When you search for things, Google will present you with a list of relevant results. A company that pursues an SEO strategy is going to focus on finding ways of changing the language on their site or planning certain keywords, titles, tags, and pages in a way that gets the most exposure in those search results. These strategies generally consist of one, tweaking your page, two, getting people to link to you, and three, researching keywords before you actually create the pages. Yes, I know recently it's changed quite a bit. We'll cover that. How many searches are there on Google in a day? 3.5 billion with a B. That is 40,000 searches every second. SEO, if done well, can be an absolute monster of a channel. Hashtag crush it. Number two, SE. M. Following up on that last one, when people search on Google, they will be shown ads mixed in with the search results they get. With Google, it's pretty obvious what is an ad and what is not an ad, and with Bing, well, I'm kind of assuming it's all an ad because Bing is terrible. SEMs go something like this. SEO can take forever, so why not skip the line instead? Companies pay for these ads in the hopes that you'll click them and get diverted to their page. That's why we call it search engine marketing, S-E-M. The way that this works is that companies will place bids for placement in key positions they want, and when someone clicks on that ad, then they pay. If you wanna be a terrible person, go search mesothelioma and then click an ad you just charged a law firm about $140. Seriously, just for that one click. Anyway, hence the acronyms for cost per click, CPA or cost per action, and CPM, cost per millimum. Just kidding, literally no one on earth knows what the M and CPM stands for. Pro tip, the order that the ads are displayed in correlates to number one, how much they bid, and number two, how well their website relates to your search. We will cover this in the course. Number three, content marketing. This is when a business creates free or very low price content and distributes it online with the idea that they can one, pitch their business somewhere inside of that content or two, increase their exposure and attract people to check out the rest of their site. Content is a term developed by the government to drive you crazy by its sheer lack of specificity. Your blog, content. Your YouTube comment, content. Your cat learns how to type, content. And it is said so often that some, mostly me, say that it is the vegan of the internet. Please stop talking about it. The number one thing people do this through, can you guess it? Blogs. Blogs, spelled B-L-A-G-S, and actually pronounced blags, are essentially free content that is shared with the public, and in return, the business gets email addresses or leads or just traffic to their site. Number four, PR. When I say PR, I just mean public relations. 
It's what we mean when we say Git press. It means media outlets primarily, but you can extend it to larger blocks and sites that have a following. Primarily, these are topical. Your company did something, but there are also entire strategies built around getting more mentions and how to keep media outlets talking about you forever. This is probably the closest you'll ever get to being famous. Number five, social and display advertising. Remember when we talked about search engine marketing? It was like, I don't know, three minutes ago. Well, if you're interested in search, you'll probably be interested in social. Social advertising is when you take out ads on sites like Facebook or Twitter. Advantages of this is that you can base your ads instead of on what they search for, you can base it on what they like or their demographics. Are you a 24 year old white male in a college town? Well, if I were working for Chipotle, I would be all up in your newsfeed. You can even do creepy things like target by behaviors. Facebook, for instance, can let you advertise to people who are looking to move from their home soon. Yes, I know, it's incredibly weird. Now, the second part of this is display advertising, which basically amounts to things like banner ads and Google AdSense. These are big blocks of images or text that you see on your page trying to get you to click them. Do they work anymore? Yeah, maybe. I lump these two together, why? Well, because in both cases, you are in fact displaying some sort of an image, unlike Google, with obviously the exception being Google AdSense. All right, are you out of breath? Because I sure am. Next lecture, we'll wrap up the remaining five. See you then.